Self Publishing Podcast, episode number 65. Welcome to the Self Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, sometimes known as the Shill, the Nose, and the Yeti, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-hosts are Sean Platt and David Wright, who can't get enough of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you want to mention, since I said that, do you want to talk at all about what you're thinking uh, about doing, or is that I won't, I won't say the name of it, because I haven't bought the domain, but basically I'd like to do a, a podcast where I interview various uh, artistics, um, not autistics, uh, artistic types, uh, photographers, writers, uh, comic strip artists. Basically, I, I have like all these different people that I kind of follow, and I would like to, you know, interview them and talk to them. And it, it's not stuff that specifically fits in self-publishing podcast, or nothing fits in Better Off Undead. So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sean and I were immediately like. Hey, we want in on that. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Here's the thing. I when, when we didn't know what to do with Better Off Undead like ten episodes ago, or we were thinking about killing it. I said, well, why don't we do this like interview sort of show where we could just interview different people? And I pitched this, and they're like, no, no, that's too much work. We don't want to do that. So I'm like, you mother. So I'm I'm pitching my idea today. What I'm gonna do? And they're like, oh, we want in. We want in. And I'm like, you mother. I, I just went. I spent like five hundred dollars in podcasting equipment in the past. That's two days. like thirty grand in real people dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he kept asking me for more stuff to buy. I'm like, this thing you do not, you do not need this. Can I say five more times? You do not need this. Oh, to buy it. Not quite. That's not the Dave I know. <laughs> what it's all hell? sunshine and unicorn. Oh, <laughs> you're like his mistress too. <laughs> it's got a little love triangle. You thing are going a on here. slutty, slutty writer. <laughs> yes. Well, you're slutty too. Yeah, I'm the biggest slut. Yeah, you're like Mr. Orgy with all the writers you're working with. Yeah, I'm I'm Alexi <laughs> Maxwell. Yeah. I'm totally on a high this week with the beam being out. Like Yeah. I'm so hyped. I can't wait to see if people I can't wait to see that people like it. Well, I I I'm waiting to see that first review, but it's like I'm going to have to wait a while because it's long. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even like when Unicorn Western came out, which is really long, but people had a head start on that one. They'd already you know? read through four. Yeah, they'd already read through four. There was five books to read, but this has, um, there's, a, there's, just a, there's a lot here, which is, is that, are we going to talk about that today I at all? I was just thinking maybe we should, you talking about the Twitter discussion? Yeah, because I think that's really good, and, and yeah. there's actually something I've wanted to talk about for the last three, four weeks, and I always forget, cause it, or it doesn't seem especially relevant, but it's very relevant to this. Um. Uh, but I thought that was a great discussion. Yeah, I do too. Do you want to intro it? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so, um, does this in any way tie... Dave, did in... you see the discussion, by the way? About what? I think he was tagged on some of it, but not all of it. So it might have been confusing. Because it was mainly... It started as a Beam discussion, so it was mainly me and Sean getting... No, all I saw was like a million upstream... Color. There were like 70 upstream color conversations. I was oh, like, what the was... hell did I wake up to? Yeah, that was a week ago. The... Um... Can't wait for that conversation. By the way, the um, no, it was uh, uh, it was a pricing discussion. Oh, yeah. okay. No, I didn't see any of that. Okay, so this is all interesting. We should talk about this. Does, now, my question is: Does it in any way tie into our actual topic of keeping your confidence up? Because that's not just haters. It's when people Maybe. kind of like disagree with your idea and your philosophy, and they're not quite getting it. You well, know? yeah, and and I I don't know if you can on the Hangouts they, it cuts it off, so you, you can't see the whole thing. But it says something like. I, I named it some because I, I can't see it either. I named it something like keeping your confidence up in the face of assholes or something. Oh. Or it's not literally assholes. I just thought that was a yeah. funny title. It's yeah, like, and no one, no one's being an asshole about this. But there are people who clearly aren't getting it, and so that means there are other. You know, if you hear one person who's not, there's a hundred. So and, maybe. and and what what I meant, and this is the way that it kind of tangentially ties into it, was uh, like your family and your friends and your spouse yeah. and. The people in your network who maybe don't understand what the hell it is that you do and are they think it's cute that you write. And that's what I meant. You know? <laughs> right. Right. No, I, I I think that that's all great. And this is a this is a good starting point. So this was yesterday, did this start? Yeah, um, yesterday. Okay, so yesterday the beam came out and we're we're launching it at twenty percent off. So it's seven ninety nine. It's normally a nine ninety nine book. 
And there were a few people on Twitter asking about that pricing decision and, you know, well, wouldn't you be making more money if it was priced four ninety nine and you would just sell so many more? And, um, and or just that it looked high, like it looked like we were pricing ourselves out. Yeah, they're like, well, you're, you're indie. Basically, the, the, the conversation wasn't that $9.99 was too much for a book. It was that $9.99 was too much for our book. That $9.99 was too much for an indie book because it somehow has less value. And Johnny and I are... Well, now, to be fair, I don't think anybody actually said that. I think that we're in the indie world, so we can't help but think that way. But nobody said... Well, it's your stuff, so it's not worth that. Well, no, 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 that was the language. It's an, not our stuff, but it's an indie book. Indie, you're, it's for indie books. This is priced out. And um, one of Johnny's points was, well, yes, but we're also talking about it. You know, it's a political thriller, and if you look at those books, they're all like ours is actually low. But our whole point was um, that it's really important the the pricing decisions that we make on this because we are setting precedents and. Um, it's a little high for an indie book, but it's not absurd. And the point is, it's it's 500 pages. It's a big it, piece but, of work. But it's not it's not even that. I mean, that it, there is that as well. I think that that's that's almost a separate discussion. It, yeah, there's a like, lot. Yeah, there's a lot to this. So the the basically the way that I looked at it is, I mean, there's a few things. Look at for comparison's sake. We already have established, like nobody disagrees at this point. I mean, I'm sure there are people who disagree, but in general, people don't. On, haven't told us they disagree with six uh, episodes of a serial that are uh, about, around 14, 15,000 words at uh, 99 cents each during launch and then bundled at six. Did you, did you just here? loop? Oh, hold on a second. This is weird. Okay, so thanks, Garrett. Here's what happened. For those, <laughs> Garrett said, "Don't forget your live comments today." So I go to the YouTube page, mm -hmm. and I suddenly cut in, and there's Sean telling me about it being 500 pages. It's I'm just like, didn't he just fucking say that? It's because <laughs> it's playing the YouTube video. Oh, the minute. Anyway, so what what I was gonna, I uh, need the what link. I was, I'm totally confused. You just go to uh, YouTube.com/slash/self-publishing-podcasts without the T, and just search for the videos. Um, anyway, so so what I was saying is that everybody seems to agree that uh, a serial that's four times, or I'm sorry, six times fourteen thousand words at six dollars, five ninety nine, that that's fine, and <laughs> right. we've doubled the length of the individual episodes. So we went ahead and said, okay, well that's that's a two ninety nine product. It's a length of unicorn. It's longer than unicorn westerns. It's twenty eight to thirty thousand per episode. Which we've already established, 2.99 for that length is plenty, and then we've doubled. Instead of it being six times 14,000 words, it's six times 30,000 words. What are we? Are we going to price it at six again? Like that, just for comparison's sake. Yeah, we. Make any sense. This is a. This is. It, you got to think of it like like budget, right? So our budget on this project was high. This is the most expensive project that we've ever done, and we we um. Because our raw materials are our minutes, right? Like we don't have to pay for sets or actors or any of that, but we do have to pay for time and, and story production. We have to pay for the time that it takes to make up the story and to articulate the story. And very early in our production, we thought, okay, there's no way. Um, <laughs> what is Dave doing? I don't know. He <laughs> orders our discussion. Okay. So uh, um, now I'm trying to get the, the the chat thing going. Go ahead, uh, keep talking. Okay, so uh, very early on in the beam, I mean, it was it was at maybe episode two as it was originally conceived, which would still be episode one. We were running out of room. <laughs> we were like, okay, clearly we do not have enough space here, and we made the the decision, um, which we put. It was an artistic decision before um, a money decision, because for us it would have been simpler, faster, whatever, we'd still have the same number of weeks if we had halved the, 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 the articulation of the world and done it for $5.99 like we were supposed to. But we doubled the project because that's what it needed. We knew we couldn't make the story that we wanted to make in that amount of space. So we doubled the space, but we didn't double the price. We went from $5.99 to $9.99, and that's fair. But... It's also, you know, Johnny and I have talked a lot about the Starbucks effect and how that is important. Like, we're not afraid to price ourselves, not 
<laughs> right, exactly. Out of the market? <laughs> no, n- not at all. It's to say that this is who we are and this is what we do and this is this is what what we're worth. And it's not it's not one book. If the beam was one book, we would make maybe a different decision. Maybe I mean it wouldn't be 4.99. That would be stupid, but um, it might not be 9.99. But the point is, the beam isn't one book or one season of anything. It's one piece of an entire um, year's worth of production. It's it's one piece of 52. How many and words is it? 165,000. Which so, was close to what? Yesterday's Gone first season? Um, no, it's closest to Yesterday's Gone second season, which is 145. So, And I would say... All things told, yesterday's gone is underpriced, but I wouldn't want to price it any higher. It is what it is. I think it's great. Um, it's it's the right price. I I love yesterday's gone the way it's all organized. Well, you but, also set expectations there. If you suddenly went to ten dollars for that, people right, would hate you. Right. We've also set that's exactly right. We've also set expectations because when we did that, we didn't know what things cost or what the return was. So if you'll notice, anything after yesterday's gone is a little bit shorter because it's supposed to be. Like you also want to deal with and this is one of the things that also makes the beam expensive is on the back end because it's more expensive for a reader, not just a writer. This takes more of their time, and we have to worry about burning our readers out, giving them 30,000 words in a week. You know, that's a lot. That's that's double the, the 15,000. 15,000 is a nice sweet spot. It, a reader can, can plow through that and be hungry for more, be legitimately like, oh, I want another one, which is one of the big, uh, I think, benefits of what Dave and I are doing right now with going back to the serialization for Yesterday's Gone is it makes people hungry for the world. And... Um, Dave sent me a, an awesome article about the. Um, no, he told me about it, but I ended up catching up with it a couple of days ago. That was in Entertainment Weekly about the the mass consumption of Arrested Development and how like a lot of people just got kind of burnout on it. Like they they just ate it like too much candy on Halloween and then it's over and you're just kind of. Left or if like, you're made too much candy every day. <laughs> so I think that 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 that's another thing that made it expensive. But but for us, really, it's it's perception is really important. We're saying this is this is who we are. Like we're not. I don't price my stuff because it's indie. I think that that's absurd. Um, you know, a it's, movie ticket. Yeah, I want to raise the objection that I imagine a lot of people are 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 raising right now. And and actually, you you sort of fishtailed away from it at the end. But um, what I was going to say is that. Uh, people are going to say, "Well, uh, readers don't care about um, about what your expense is. Like, don't you need to worry more about selling?" I mean, I have yeah. my answer to that. That's um, a point that I see listed a lot. And well, I, well, yes, I would you, actually kind of agree with that. I, I would agree with that too, actually. Um, but, but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that went into the beam pricing. So if you take one of them. Um, it, it's not one book, it's the top of a funnel. And when we were talking about that on Twitter yesterday, um, the response was that, um, yeah, but I think you're, you're, you're overestimating the value of the word season. And that, to me, is, um, is communicating that, that it's not being understood what we're doing. Because and and if you... to be clear, I was very specific up front that I didn't think we should just say the beam season one. There's right. a reason yeah. it's called The Beam, The Complete First Season. And I've yeah. mentioned it as the first season collection. I've added another word on it when I've mentioned it because we want people to understand it's not one book, it's a collection of six. Now, I know that that's splitting hairs in some ways. But but it's not because that's, that's what market perception is, and you have to define yourself that way. And so when, when a new reader is, is looking for us, it's not like all they see is this one nine ninety nine book. They also see that they're individually available for two ninety nine. So that 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 gives them a comparison in their mind. They know they can start it for ninety nine cents now. Although we'll want to get that perma free as soon as we can, um, and just you know that's that's what we promote. So you can start it for free, and then at that point it either costs you fifteen dollars to read it, you know, one at a time, or ten dollars. And we're 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 happier with ten dollars actually. We make less money, but we have a happier reader. But that's a really really good exchange. But you got to think of what people are seeing when they find you, and when they find you, you need to make sure they have alternatives. And, so we yeah, don't have it. Oh, sorry, Sean. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. 
Well, I what I was I was actually going to mention alternatives. So the idea that that I was going to mention is you were going to mention alternatives to buying the full season, but I was just going to mention in general like the fact this works particularly well because it's not the only thing that we are doing. Like right. this is our pr uh, it's I consider it our premium thing. Sean mentioned it in, in the Roman Sands email, and I mentioned it today as we think it's the best thing that we've written together. Like we love Unicorn Western, but we think this is better. Um, and because of that, it's like that's our this is our tier one sort of a of a project, and we're going to price higher for it. And if fewer people buy it, if that becomes a problem, then we'll address it. But for now, I'm kind of content with selling less and having a perception of a. Of a I more I 100 percent agree with that. This is this to me. It's it, the beam needs to be 9.99. It's our best product. Everything else comes below it. So I'm content making less money and and having that 9.99 on there. The uh, the other thing to keep in mind too is is uh, the comparison of us to other indies, saying that we're a pricing above indies with that price point. And actually, people weren't just like wow 9.99. People were like wow 7.99. <laughs> right, well, which is our sale price. Yeah. price. Right, that's on yeah. sale. It's going to be nine ninety nine yeah. in a couple of days, and so it wasn't that you we're we're pricing too high. It was it's well, it's what you said. It's like it, we're compared to other indies, and uh, but nobody knows that you're an indie. Like I mean, they they know that James Patterson is a household. Well, no, player. there's there's a group of Amazon buyers that are definitely conscious of indie versus not indie. But for but sure. how big is that group? Um, well, I think they're the they're the regular buyers. They're the people who talk to other people. They're the they're the mavens. The mavens are all aware of indie versus not indie, and the mavens are the people you want reading your books. So all right, I don't I don't know that I would agree with that without some more data, but I'll take it at face value for now. Oh well, just to be clear, I'm totally talking out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> that for a fact. I think that the <laughs> average person. Research. I think that an average person who buys a book isn't saying. Doesn't think about that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. but that, no, I agree with that. But you, but we're not talking about the average people. We're talking about the mavens. The the mavens average, when do I get to weigh in? Let Dave now go go. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I I think nine ninety nine uh, is a bad price, and here's why. Your number one advantage over mainstream authors is price. If you're pricing the same as them, it's so much harder to to, to sell your book. That that's Maybe. my main objection. But we're not. I think it's a matter of what you're trying to do. I'm not. Mm -hmm. We're not raising the price because we say that's what traditional people are doing. So therefore, we can too. It's more of what do we feel? What are we willing to sell this for? Like what? Well, what 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 a book is worth to you is not what it's worth to readers. That's what a lot of people say. But if, we've established, but if we've established that a cereal at 14 times 6 is worth $6, why wouldn't a cereal that's twice as much be worth more? Right, as long as you have your readers. Because all you're saying otherwise is that there is, there's no reason to, to put art first. There's no reason to double the length and take the time to tell that story because all of a sudden... Well, they don't know what's, what length it started out at. I mean, it, it, if, it's a, if it's around the same size as Yesterday's Gone Season 2, so how do you justify... So readers aren't willing to pay for a better experience. Well, no, wait. Let me ask a hypothetical question here. So let's say we don't do the full season collection, and mm -hmm. it's six books of 30,000 words each for two ninety nine. dollars mm -hmm. So is that okay? Uh, if people want to pay that, then yeah. But... Okay, because then it, it, all we're doing is giving them a better book. No, because that's the backwards art. You always say... No one's going to pay eighteen dollars for a book. Like when we've talked about doing that with. Well, I I don't think they will. I just said if people want to pay that, then yeah. I would just say that if two ninety nine for that length is okay, and if bundling them reduces the price, I don't see how that's anything anybody could have a problem with. But it is a book. It is a book, just like any other book that's out there. You are competing as a book, and as a book, nine ninety nine is a premium. Price, but your right. argument says that without the season <laughs> bundle, it's okay. Uh, I I wouldn't do it like that. I said if you can sell it, then fine. But I wouldn't do it as that. But it's a little easier to swallow that way than the nine ninety nine is a large, uh, because when I when I look at books. I'm going to be honest, unless I know that I can't get it cheaper, 999 I usually don't move on that book. 
Dave, don't you guys have a season one and two Yesterday's Gone collection for nine ninety nine? Yeah. yeah. Well, so what's the difference? That's a lot fucking bigger. No, it's not. It's the same length. No, no it it's it's not. It's it's almost it's, it's almost twice the size. It's not okay. almost twice okay. the size, but it's it's a but it's a big chunk. Isn't bigger. your usual length for Yesterday's Gone about fourteen fifteen thousand words, and you maybe went over budget in the first seasons? Yes, the first seasons well, we, go way we started, over budget. Well, we yeah, we started off at higher word count. So season three and season four are around fifteen thousand word episodes. No, they're around twenty. Okay. What else do you have? No, season season three is around sixteen thousand, and season four I think averages seventeen. Okay. okay we're so getting lost season, in the weeds here. Though. Well, but maybe, I'm, maybe trying, less. I'm trying to I'm trying to make a point. If you no, because you're season because three you're, and season four, then it is the same length, rough, roughly. It's slightly more. But then we're but then we're commoditizing it. And we're saying, okay, well, I'd better knock thirty cents off of that because it's slightly less work. Yeah, we could take the existing beam that we have now and make it make it season one and season two, but. And then each of those is five ninety nine, and they would do well. We'd probably sell a lot more. That's probably all true. But then we're not giving the reader the experience they deserve. Now it looks like we're putting the reader second here, but we're actually putting them first. Yeah, we, but you, how do you get that across? We trust because, our readers and the time. We're not in a hurry for this. Because the objection that everybody has is to the bundle. The individual things are okay, so the argument seems to be don't offer the bundle, which saves them half as much money. <laughs> right. No, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's one of those – it's a genre-hopping conversation because the objections to this are, are from people, I believe, who aren't coming from the same place that we are. They're not – their decisions would be different because this would be their one book or, or their, their one part of a, of a thing – where for it's not that you know it's it's just not for for us specifically it's it's just one thing out of all this other stuff and we're not in a hurry to make the beam we're in a hurry to make um uh to make the best decisions possible and the beam at 999 is probably going to serve us a lot better 12 months from now than doing it any other way and you have to think like that. And we have releases coming out every single week. So in between now and the end of the year, we have many more times to promote the beam, not at nine ninety nine, but at two ninety nine, with that 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 entry point. And um, and every time we do that, the nine ninety nine looks like a good comparison. There there and is another there is another I, thing. Go, go ahead, Dave. I was just gonna. I think I think. With you and I, Sean, we've already kind of set up expectations, and those expectations are going to be transferred to you and Johnny. And the expectations are six books bundled together at one price, five ninety nine. So uh, even if you're making a larger bundle or larger books, I think in the people that are our fans, they're going to see this as, oh, that's a higher priced one season. And I'm okay with that as long as – I mean, it'll be a different thing if that all of a sudden shows up in the reviews – it, but, it's like the genre hopping thing, though. It's like, I'd rather set the expectation now. Right, 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 right. It's like every one of Dave's points just proves what I'm my, my I, thinking. It's I just have one of those two things. It's two different ways of thinking. I know? have two things I'd like to say. One of them will maybe support my point. The other will not, but I'm going to say it anyway. One is <laughs> that um, we've talked to, I think he said this on the show, Mark from Kobo said, and he said it in email several times to several different people, like it's a big thing with him, is when he's trying to push a book, it takes the same amount of effort to put forward for any merchandiser or whatever a book that costs three ninety nine or five ninety nine as one that goes for nine ninety nine. And he said to us over and over again, if you can get those bundles for for Kobo specifically, if he's behind them, it's an easier sale. So that's the, and then I'll say the other thing, which you guys are gonna shit all over me for, but I'm gonna say it anyway, is I'm kind of pissed off that like it's like it's I could, you know, what? But ten dollars is too fucking much for a book. I mean, come <laughs> on, god damn it. Yeah. Like ten, no, it's ten dollars. No, not I'm not going to shit on you. I totally agree with that, and I, and I, that's why it's important that this is. It. I, I know that I'm the author, and I know that readers. I, I, and I, I get that, and that's why that isn't. I'm not going to try and argue that point, but it does piss me off. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 the guy that was talking about buying a movie for ten dollars. That being a bit too much. I Wait, a movie, movie exactly. This is a this is a cost value thing. A movie is two hours, 
And and he knows it's probably going to well, be pretty bad. Well, a movie. They put millions of dollars in. Lots it's of Birdemic time. 2, dude. Like, you have to give all the information here. That was Birdemic 2, Johnny Sanchez. That is a masterpiece. It is. Have you seen it? No. <laughs> I don't want to spend ten dollars right now. <laughs> All right. The, the, yeah, that's the that's the thing. I would spend ten dollars for upstream color. Upstream color. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here, I here. I did spend ten dollars to watch upstream color <laughs> before it was on Netflix. Oh wow, that's awesome, dude. Okay, so here's here's the thing, and and I know this is one of those things that will make us sound like dicks, but for the beam specifically. We want people who are willing to spend ten dollars to read it. Like, it is a bigger investment. It's and I'm okay with that. It's like, and you, and, I'm and okay I know with selling you, fewer. Yes, yeah. you fundamentally don't get this, Dave, and it's okay. But it is one of it is it is a marketing thing. It is I would rather have fewer buyers for a premium product because they're better customers. That's that's just that's a fact. If you sell a product for Twenty-seven dollars, and you sell one for nine ninety-seven. It's a thousand-dollar product. It's way better to sell, you know, a, a few at one thousand because you have people who are really dedicated and they're into it and whatever. You're going to get results with those people, and that's a different thing than the twenty-seven's easy, whatever. They just feel like, oh, I, I did it. And I think I'm not saying that readers who spend more on their books are better readers. That's not what I'm trying to say. And this is a delicate thing to try to communicate. Okay. Because I, I just have to interrupt you. Yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to price in the market. It's not priced out of the market though. It's okay, I, out of I, the okay, you know market. what? I'm looking at Patrick Rothfuss, uh, a great indie writer. I think he's indie, maybe not. I don't know. A, a, the name of the wind is like his big book. It's a huge fantasy book. Uh, his first book is seven hundred and thirty six pages. That's pretty fucking big. He's got it priced at eight ninety nine. Right now it's eight oh nine. Good for him. That's awesome. It's, yeah. Here, let, let me let me just underscore a, let me just underscore a point in case it's not crystal clear. Oh, eight dollars. I'm sorry. Is is we are we are not we are not trying to justify skinning puppies. Okay. <laughs> we we are we are making a decision on the basis of the book, and I understand that uh, of our book that we're selling and that affects nobody else. So I understand that we're discussing this from a, a self publishing perspective, but at the end of the day. Maybe Sean and I are wrong, but it only hurts us. Like, you know, so it doesn't sell, and so we adjust. I think it's an experiment we'd like to try. But, but no, okay, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Not to be arrogant cock man at all, but I don't think this is one where we can be wrong, Johnny, because we're not – because the argument on the other side is you'll sell more if it's not 99. And I'm not even disagreeing with that argument. Maybe we will. I don't care. I'm not. I mean, you don't care if you sell more books. Wow, no. that's so contrary to no, what an author no, wants to do. Because no, because you, you because it's one piece. It's the not beam, that different from creating a movie on the basis of, it, uh, you know, an artistic movie like Upstream Color versus something that's a summer blockbuster. Well, that's not going to sell. Well, I don't care. I want to make okay, it anyway. This it's is not that different. No, this is Christopher Nolan making Inception. Okay, Inception is a gamble. Inception is by no, it's a huge, huge budget thinking piece. Whatever he can't charge more for the ticket. I mean, tickets are what they are. But that was a more expensive gamble. So for us, the Beam is a more expensive gamble. It's not our only book. If it was our only book, then everything would be made around pricing decisions. But this is a prestige decision. It's it's what it's looking at our whole product line. And, and finding ways to separate what is what. And Chupacabra Outlaw is a great two ninety nine little throwaway fun story. But certainly, The Beam is worth $7 more as an experience than Chupacabra We're Outlaw. We're bundling a bunch of shit together. The argument is... You can't bundle shit together and make it nine ninety nine. That's <laughs> you the got, argument that, 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 that all everybody is making. <laughs> no, it's 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 totally fine. It's uh, is this just yeah, you 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 understand that, and our listeners understand that you're bundling it together. Most readers see it as one book. Then most they don't readers have to see, buy the nine ninety nine version. Most most readers well. <laughs> no, <laughs> Most readers see Yesterday's Gone, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3 as individual books, even though they're all six episodes. 
We can because call it, that's the we way can we... call it we can call it whatever we want to call it. But it comes down to the readers seeing the book. They want the full experience. They consider the season an individual book. Whether you do or not doesn't matter. It's all about because what the reader that's thinks. That's how we have presented it, and that's the whole point here. Dude. John, let's get rid of the bundle and just make everybody pay eighteen. That'll solve it. <laughs> I, 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 there's this is a really funny. That's the argument everybody is making. I, I know. I, I know. Okay, so so here's 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 the thing. Exactly, Dave. We've trained people to think that. And now this is an opportunity to train people to think something else. This is our first... There's a lot of things I do at Realm and Sands differently because... Cause Johnny, because I'll take it on the face. Because Johnny ah! takes it on the face. Yeah, ultimately, yes, because Johnny takes it on the face. <laughs> so thank you, Johnny. I got a funnel. <laughs> Johnny's funnel is way tighter than yours. Hey, now... <laughs> Wow. So have we beaten that to death? It's funny because it's an accurate statement. How do you know? <laughs> why that his funnel is tighter than yours? That's what we're talking about here. <laughs> oh, you mean books. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Can, um, so do have we beaten That's that to death? Horrible. horrible. Can we stop on that? Um, I don't know. I could go for another hour easily. But Shocking. I think I am exhausted by it. But <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's, it's really, it is really funny because... To me, this isn't. Um, it's almost like one of those things. Anyone on the other side of the argument should be like, "Oh, I totally see, would see what you're saying. Yeah, I would price it differently, but I, I get it. You're playing a different game. Cool." <laughs> and then it's over. But well, it's but like, the, we are in an environment where we debate these things. Of yeah, course, people true. are going to debate it. Of course, Dave's going to, you know, argue for his side. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Guys, Dave got to be right the last week when you guys were beating up on me. <laughs> so, so Dave, what would what would you do? Would you split this into two? Would you just release it at five ninety nine and say that's what it is? Would you not have individuals? What would you do with the beam at at at, at twice the length of anything else that you have? How, you how large is it again? One sixty? No, it's almost one seventy. Okay, it was one sixty five, and then we added a cliffhanger. It's almost one seventy. I would have made it two books. But the, the okay, I, I guess the same argument is. Yes, yeah, it would have cost more. It would have cost more, yes. But but we're all up it's all about appearance and it's all about what people see. You're presenting it as one book. Whether you think you are or not doesn't matter. But but that's that's true, but if we had if you had a, a trilogy and each book was priced at four ninety nine, which everyone agrees is a good price for a novel, then the argument is you you better not bundle those and make one for nine ninety nine right. and save people five. Now, that, 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 okay, here's the difference. Okay, and this is what you're not seeing. You are releasing the beam right now. People don't know it in these other forms. If you waited until like you know a year or two All down right, the road and bundled, argument. so it's what people see and know. You're releasing it right off the bat. That's what people see. But that's, again, again, that's I, I see that short, argument. I I I, I totally see the argument. But again, it's, it's thinking short term. It's not thinking like what is the beam to us a year from now. You know what is the beam? Okay, you have to get it known in other formats though, in order for that nine ninety nine to work. Yeah. If, no, we would have to get it. We would have to get it known if we didn't have a new product coming out next Thursday and the Thursday after and the Thursday after that. The fact that we have on this weekly release schedule, it's it means we have to keep pedaling the bike. It doesn't. And it does mean that any one individual title matters a little less. Like it, yeah. we don't have our our sales set on anything, which no, is kind of nice. It, it actually, means we have to make decisions that are best for the other 51 weeks. And, and for our company, you know, years to come, and for what we're doing as writers and publishers, all of that. That matters more than the success of any individual title. We're trying to build the success of a company. And that changes all the decisions. And then it's not a matter of what do we price this. It's what are, what are, we, what are we doing in the next six months, and how is, are the decisions we make now and the precedents we set now, how will that dictate our behavior? And that's re those are really, really, really important questions to ask and to answer before you start stuff and that's part of the joy of um, you know Johnny taking it on the face. The, the, fun, the fun part is that if I don't change the title of this episode it looks like we're saying that everyone who doesn't agree with us Sean are assholes. Oh well you have to I don't even that. see a title on the show it says name this video call. Yeah and, and again to, to, to restate I think anyone who says the beam is priced higher than the rest of the market you're totally right. I am thoroughly comfortable with that.
the do, do you want to transition into another topic? Because I'm exhausted by it. <laughs> do you want to go into the main topic as we were going to discuss it? Um, well, you, now no, we got 15 we, minutes left. Yeah, we should. We should but, but I do have. I do have about a half hour left. We started yeah. late. I have a I have a pricing question actually. It's it's totally oh, related to this. Um, <laughs> And it's also it also has like a, a there's there's two elements to this. Um, I hope it's inflammatory. No, <laughs> um, no, it's you know that that the writer dad book that I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So there's two points. About Twenty nine ninety nine. No, one is pricing and one is one is the other thing, um, which is man, this book has been hard to write. Um, it, uh, uh, is this so the one some, you were writing at 3,000 uh, words per hour? Yes, yes. That's a great point. Okay, this so... Is the, this is the book that's hard to write? Yes. <laughs> so on the, the first draft of this book was about 80,000 words, and I really did maintain a probably on the low end a 2,500 um, uh, hour, word an hour average getting it out. It, it, it came out, it poured out, it was really easy. The editing of this has been so hard. It has been... Um, somebody sent me an email this morning asking me what to do because they were totally blocked on this one project and they just couldn't get any momentum, they just couldn't write, and they're like, have you ever felt that way about anything? And with fiction, no. With nonfiction, nonfiction is harder for me to write um, by a lot. Uh, uh, I was talking to, um, to, to Jonathan Fields a couple of days ago, and he was talking about he's starting a... a a new book project, and we were talking about the difference between writing nonfiction and, and fiction. And nonfiction is just so much harder for me. And this particular project, I'm surprised at how hard it is because these are all things that happen to me. I should be able to tell this story really easily. But now I'm finding like I have to say everything the right way because there are real people in here. I don't want to hurt any feelings. I don't want to like when things were going really poorly for us. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because there are some pretty dark things that happened in the last five years trying to get all this <laughs> Chapter going. called Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Dave gets I a whole... Chapter, I'm actually serializing five, the I Dave David part. Right. <laughs> no, but, but all these people that I've met and done things with, like I want to tell these stories, but I want to tell them in the right way and I want to make sure no one's feelings are hurt. And when things are bad, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. And when things are going really well, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. And I'm just finding myself like daving through everything, second guessing like every <laughs> sentence. I'm like, oh, people are gonna think this, and this is horrible. And I've just not enjoyed this experience the way I want to. And I really, the book I really want to write is for Cindy and Ethan and Haley. And I should just keep that in my head and filter everything else out and only care about that version of the book. But I'm finding it hard because I'm like, well, if this person reads this, they're gonna feel this way, and it's got family and friends, and I'm just ugh. So anyway, there's that. But I've also really been thinking a lot about pricing because this book is the opposite of the beam. I would love for this book to just be free, honestly. Um, I hate the idea of it being 99 cents. Um, and I don't really want to charge 2.99 for it, but I'd rather have it be 2.99 than 99 cents. But fiction is easy for me because you're just making stuff up. Like that's it. You're not have real people and real feelings and that kind of thing. So, um, but it's also like, I feel like I have to put this book out, but I'm not writing it for any other reason than, like, money has nothing to do with this book. Like, I don't, this is for my family. This is an archive. And so I'm, I'm really, like, I have no idea how to price it. I don't think word count matters at all. I've trimmed it down to, like, 55,000 words so far, and what I have is much tighter. But still, I feel, like, indulgent. I feel like, oh, I'm asking you to read about my, my family. Like, I don't want to charge somebody to read about my life. Like, I feel... Yeah. It's weird. Okay, I'm gonna weigh in here before yeah. you ramble on any fucking longer. Yeah. Uh, I would actually spend a decent amount of money reading about something because I like reading about behind the scenes of an author. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, you know, four ninety nine, five ninety nine. That's fine by me. See, I would make it two ninety nine. <laughs> well, make I it two ninety nine then. I don't know. I just like to add that ZC Bolger King... said in the the, the the comment stream. He said, uh, "So Sean knows the books are out of the market." His and Johnny's whole points are they are okay with that because it's their book, so nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody wins on this discussion either of your uh, your your book. If, so. if if Stephen King wrote the uh, wrote a writer dead type book, you know, dude, I would buy it. that in a second. I'd pay twenty bucks even if he priced it out so of the market. So people who like so, you will buy it, and people that yes. don't, you don't worry about yes. because and, it's and, not for them. 
I acknowledge this like so ahead of time that this is All not right. practical. I'm being, I'm totally being Dave on this. I think right. I'm not well, worth, Dave. Dave is telling you not no, to be Dave. I'm not worth like three dollars to have people to tell people <laughs> about my life. Like I don't think my life is that exciting. Like, I, and I just feel like. Well, I would I, say unless you've had at least one orgy, you probably shouldn't write an autobiography. <laughs> I I haven't, but see, it's not an autobiography. It's really like a five year story. The the it talks about like. You know, getting writer dad, meeting you, all the adventures in the last five years, and the last <laughs> chapter is adventures. Moving. I wanna, I wanna see the me stuff before it goes to press. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. And the, um, the, the, uh, it ends with, um, it ends with uh, moving to Austin. And in fact, I wrote the last chapter because the teenth, which is the first, um, the first ever, like that's when writer dad came out was July 17th. So. The the last book or the last the last page was written and the last chapter is called July seventeenth, two thousand thirteen. And I wrote it the day before yesterday. So the book is finished. That's the end of it. Like that's that five story five year journey. But I just feel stupid charging for it. I like I just want to make it free so that no one can oh, bitch about up. it that I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. But What's it's the, the subject op- of today's show. <laughs> Well, Bullshit. it was going to be about, you know, you know. Because I tweeted do. a subject and we've not even touched it. Yeah, you know what? Here's here's what we should do, guys. Because I, I did want to talk about that, and but maybe we can do it next week. The idea was supposed to be, you know, your support system and and how you go on, even if people don't understand what the hell you're doing. But let's. Why don't we do voicemails instead? Because 20 minutes okay. is not, and it, it the first part doesn't relate to it at all. So we'll just name it something about. Uh, Johnny and are Sean are arrogant cockman. <laughs> people, are, people are asking for dibs on that domain name. You know what's really funny is that this episode, now that I'm I'm like watching the YouTube and people are weighing in and yelling at us, it reminds me of the the uncompleted Better Off Undead sitcom that we were gonna write because it's exactly the way Sean wrote it, with us arguing with people and live comments. We are now we have we are living our fame, people. <laughs> Alright, so let's play some voicemails then. We should have a voicemail jingle. We should. I tried, to, I tried to get a jingle made for What's Up Dave's Butt for uh, Better Off Undead, where you go, What's Up Dave's Butt, or something like that. But they were too expensive. Like, it was a cost Dude, value. Dude, hit Fiverr. Are you kidding? You, you, you <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun contest. Dude, go. go to Fiverr. What the hell? You remember the oh, Eddie good Murphy? Idea, Sean. You should the do that. Eddie Murphy <laughs> comedy song? I got it something in my butt. <laughs> I got a bumblebee. In oh, my I do. <laughs> oh, Dave, thanks so much for getting that um, that ninja sex party song stuck in my head. It was in my <laughs> song. Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> that's video that's, that's exactly that's exactly the uh, the part that I was thinking of where he goes, you know, he goes here's a list of things that Brian likes to suck. Dick, 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 balls. Love that all day. That was in my head. <laughs> Ninja Sex Party. What if is like it, what if we were gay YouTube. or something like that on YouTube? If yeah. we were gay, I don't know. Every all, all their videos are hilarious. They're awesome. <laughs> I just covered them. <laughs> oh, dick balls. Okay, so let let me play some of these uh, voicemails. Hey guys, this is Pepper from Alabama. On uh, episode fifty-seven of SPP, y'all mentioned uh, something about uploading directly to Kobo, and I think to some of the other sites so you could use the link in your promotions uh, or something like that. I didn't follow that very well, so my question is, is there any disadvantage to simply uploading the Smashwords and letting it ship to all of the other sites, except Amazon, of course, and, and conversely, is there any advantage to uploading direct to all of the other sites? Kobo, BNN, Apple, etc. Smashwords, you know, just doing all of them direct rather than just going to Kindle and Smashwords and letting Smashwords ship to the others. Um, thanks, guys. I uh, love the show. The first <clears throat> first problem there has to do with Smashwords. Uh, they're very picky. Like, we, we've had a hell of a time. Um, I don't even know if we've gotten stuff uh, included in the premium catalog, which is where they distribute to the others, for any of our Realm and Sand stuff. They're very, very particular. The other reason is, the reason that I did it for, like, I, I had a, a Fat Vampire 1, for instance, is free everywhere, and I had it distributed via Smashwords. Uh, it's still to Barnes & Noble, because you can't upload something to Barnes & Noble directly for free. But I took, 
I took down the link to Kobo from Smashwords and uploaded a Kobo specific version. The reason I did it is because I wanted a Kobo version that included a link to the upsell, the value meal, on Kobo. So that's the reason I did it. Yeah, with Smashwords, you cannot. You, you have to have their copyright page. You can't have. You can't even mention like Amazon anywhere in there. They will like remove it, um, or they'll tell you to remove it. Um, the, the the best thing about uploading to all these individual places is if you need to change your price right away, if you need to update your file right away, you can do it. If you do it on Smashwords, you're going to be waiting weeks and weeks. Yeah, and it's kind of a crapshoot. I mean, it, it does take forever for them to approve it. So, right. no smash words until they get shit right. <laughs> well, although we're the reason I wanted to do it was for Apple. To get yeah, Apple. well, that's pretty much the only way to fucking get an Apple, it seems. Unless you want to pay. Or Sony, just in case you want to sell one copy every five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Wow, you have lofty goals for Sony. <laughs> I know. That's true. I don't know that I've ever sold anything because uh, I've been in it for so long. Okay, so here's the next one. All right. Hey, guys, for uh, self-publishing podcast. Uh, Springfield MH here. I want to say thanks for your patience with the emails and the blog posts I sent your way. You guys have discussed the asking the right questions to get out of a corner that you've written yourself into or possibly through a block that you've encountered. Uh, could you give some examples of such situations and questions that have proved to be useful? And then related to that, uh, could you suggest any useful books, articles, or writers uh, dealing with that? I uh, wanted to wrap up by just saying wanted to say that all three of you, both individually and as a group, and the, the podcast are very inspirational and in helping me work through my first novel. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, either of you guys? No, nope. I, I, I hogged the mic last time. This is, what this means is that nobody has an answer. That's what that means. When Sean yeah, um, says, do you guys want to answer it, that we're, now we're in trouble. Well, no, because, then I, like, like, fuck you guys, because I either <laughs> talk too much, and I talk too much, or I, like, acquiesce, and I'm we like, don't oh, believe, Sean has we don't, be we don't believe that you're capable of change. So when we, we think it's got to be something else. Like, he wasn't fuck paying attention. Motherfucker. I always try, at least. All right, so I think, th really, it's just... No, I don't know of any specific... Um, specific uh, um, blog posts or books or anything like that. I think this is something that um, I've kind of figured out just because I I pantsed for too long. Um, when I first started writing, I never outlined, and I always figured I'd figure a way out of it, and um, and and you always do. I think it's like, it, probably the best analogy isn't trying to think about what you do in writing, it's trying to think about what you do in life. So every single person listening has gotten a fight with their somebody. <laughs> And, like, they know as soon as they step that first ankle into it, they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I know where this is going. This is not going where it's supposed to go. And, like, maybe it's the same thing you, you fight about with your spouse all the time. And, like, you weren't trying to go there, but you said something that's, like, sort of kind of related to it, and now you're just kind of hovering there, and you have to, you have to kind of back out very slowly, one thing at a time. And you have to think um, strategically, right? Like, how do I get out of this? And the best way is just kind of asking yourself the right questions. Well, what what does she what does she want to hear right now? Assuming it's a she, <laughs> right? Uh, Dave, are you imagining Sean having an argument with Cindy, <laughs> and then she's like waiting for him to go and introspect, and God damn it, he's asking questions again. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yes, that's it. So you just want to ask the right questions, and I think any solution has the right thing. It's just a matter of of it's not even finding out the right sequence of questions to um, to get out of that moment, but to get the moment that you do want. So you got to find that, like, not even at, if your characters are in some kind of really bad spot that, you, like, through a, a series of just stupid things, you got them in this place, then don't think, how do I get them out of this place necessarily, but how do I get them to the other place um, that you want that you want them to be, and then at that point, it's just articulating kind of a list down of of questions. So you go one at a time. You can't. You're not going to be able to come up with a big, probably not a big solution that gets you from this, you know, pickle over here all the way to the solution here. So what you want to do is is come with a um, 
a little steps. Yeah, exactly, little steps. So um, Memento is like amazing because if you look at Memento, every scene ends where the one before it ended. So that's like exactly this. You're just reverse engineering it. So you don't think, how do I get from all the way over here, all the way over over here? You start over here. And yes, then, how did he get there? How did he get there? And then how did he get there? And then how did he get there? And then just go, keep going back 10 minutes in the timeline or two days in the timeline or a week or whatever it is. And if you keep going into the timeline, eventually you'll get to that one like critical moment that's right there before your next dip in, in your script. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I'm plotting out Fat Vampire 5 and 6 right now. And uh, one of the things that I sort of asked myself, this isn't exactly the same thing, is like how do I want it not not just how do I want it to end but what do I want the dispositions to be at the end like who do I want to have been sort of morally victorious what way like because you can't just win or whatever you need to have won in a certain way like your hero has to be heroic if you have a hero your you know and and so I asked a lot of those questions too just trying to decide okay so what is it that needs to occur and then what would need to occur prior I'm just restating what Sean said yeah, well, it, no, but that's important. We we do that. Dave and I do that with really every project. And Dave's biggest um, moment of of glee in the second season of is um, Dave's biggest moment of glee. I want to. Can I get a quantification of that? Season one, episode four. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it, it was. <laughs> it was a fluffy. No, no, this was actually a a a creative moment where I just he brightened. We we were. We were on se- we were on season. Do you know this story, Dave? Do you Brighten know what I'm going to like say? Brighten to like a 15 watt refrigerator bulb, or brighten to like a spotlight. No, I we we decided to kill somebody. I won't say what book <laughs> it is. And I actually walked out of my office and into the living room, and I was just smiling. And my wife's like, "Why are you smiling?" <laughs> And I said, we decided to kill a main character. <laughs> and she just looked at me like, are you insane? <laughs> yeah, that, that, no, that's, that's not where no I was going. No comment on time. Dave's <laughs> brightest moment being killing somebody. No, this is, this is not his brightest moment, but this is a very recent bright moment. And the, the highlight of me personally for Z, um, second season, um, which we're just wrapping now. We're actually, we're, we're, we're in kind of post-production editing and polishing. And... Um, and I really, really enjoyed writing the second season of Z. It's been awesome, and um, and and we really complimented one another. I think, and we we didn't know our ending through the first couple of episodes. We were just kind of getting back into the world and figuring out how everything was gonna like string together. But we didn't have that ending. We didn't have the core conflict. We didn't know what we were driving to. We were kind of you know, pedaling in place, and we, we knew we could go back and fill in the blanks later once we once we knew, but but we were just finding the world, and we got to the end of um, we got to the end of season or episode two, and we were starting a plot season or episode three, and we came up with our ending, and Dave just got so happy, and 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 I could, and it was funny because we weren't on Google Plus because I had just moved into um into my apartment. And um, I didn't have internet, so I was out taking the call outside, and I couldn't see him. But his voice just like lifted several octaves, and he just seemed so much happier. And I said, "Dude, what? Did you start sucking on some helium?" And he's like, "I'm just so happy right now. I know where it's, I know where the ending is now, and I like it makes me like the first two episodes better, and I just feel clear. Now we have direction. And from that moment on, we just pedaled backwards. You know, we knew the ending, and it made it really easier to figure out those middle steps. And I think that. It's not just you know, um, it's not just how do you reverse engineer um, your way out of a, a tight spot, but how do you reverse engineer your way into a good story, you know, and coming up with the best ending. I mean, don't be Shyamalan about it and like, you know, <laughs> only care about making a random ending and ending and you know doing everything around that, but really put a lot of care into your ending because that is the last that's the lasting impression that your reader has. I'm giving Sean the kill sign. Because yeah. we have five more questions. Five. Oh, yeah, crap. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got to be off at three to have that phone call. Well, usually the Better Off Undead is only a half hour. Yeah, let's do okay. at least at so least one or two I'd more. I'd like to do a few more, but the problem okay. with questions is it opens a topic and then we go down the rabbit hole. So yeah. let me just I'll play the next one. This is about editors. Hi, this is for the self-publishing podcast. Hello, Dave, Sean, and Six Pack. This is Sean calling from New Hampshire, <laughs> a fellow goth in the trees. 
Uh, I'm about to take my plunge and try to establish a new author platform this summer. That's the plan, at least. And I feel pretty good about my chances of success, thanks to a lot of the great weekly advice you guys give. Uh, one thing, though, I'd love to have you guys talk about is the how you choose an editor, because that's the one step I'm honestly the most anxious and unsure about. I know you've given the advice of hooking up or uh, looking up an editor to a book that you like, uh, and there are things out there like the EFA, but I'm curious if there's a recommended process, I guess, that you guys have for picking someone that connects to your work. So really just trying to figure out, like, what are the great qualities of an editor and what should I look for? I've heard a few times from other people, a good move is to send, like, a short story to five editors, and whoever gives you the best feedback, you can just kind of pick up for your full-length novel. So I uh, appreciate any help you guys can give, and, uh, hey, go easy on Dave. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> well, how My new favorite color. <laughs> Um, well, I think you, I think you answered that question really well. I, I think getting an editor is really, really, really hard, because it's not just, um, it's not just who knows the rule of of grammar and and syntax and all that, which are which are really important. It's also how well does this editor know you and your style and what you're trying to communicate. And I think all of that is really, really important. Um, you know, I think an editor ideally is a relationship. Um, I'm really happy with who who Dave and I are using right now. I I, I think he's he's the best we've had so far. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I mean, that was a, a year and a half before we found him. Um, I think going to a place like Elans or Odesk or something like that and taking maybe a 2,000 word sample and hiring you know a, a half dozen editors to edit that will give you a good example because you're not even looking for making sure that they got all the commas in the right place, but kind of what their comments are if they leave them and, and that kind of thing. So that I don't know. Getting an editor is hard, man. Um, I do think it's important, uh, but that's probably the best thing to do is get little samples and find someone that way. There, two questions down. There's one that I'm remembering. It's uh, titled Dave Step In, and I think it's very it's anti Sean and I, so we got to get to that one. Oh, um, so just that's that's order? motivation. That no, 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 because this is your this is your cookie. Oh, awesome! Okay. If you get through the next one, okay. Great. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hey, this is for the self publishing podcast. Hi, guys. My name is Buddy Gott, and I've been a fan of the show for the past few months. Hey, and buddy. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to thank you guys. I've uh, been into writing for a long time, and I guess I'm like a lot of people in that. I've started a bunch of things, and I've never finished them. And um, since I've been listening to the show, you know, I've picked up on a lot of the advice that you guys have given, especially in terms of outlining and the beats. And that's helped me a lot. And I've found that I'm writing a lot more every day now. And yesterday I hit a high. I hit 70, just over 7,300 words yesterday. And Damn, I've done nice that job, and buddy. i got to tell you, it feels pretty awesome. I'm sure you guys know that it feels amazing when you oh, yeah, do that's something like too. that and you know, I'm going to have my first book hopefully out next month and again I just want to say thank you guys I, I mean I crack up listening to your show I'm sure a lot of people do but you guys give out a hell of a lot of great advice thanks a lot I love the show I'll keep listening and best of luck with all your upcoming projects that one was easy then we just say thank you yeah <laughs> dude no it's really really though thank you buddy and and it's I blog. Oh, don't ramble! Don't no, ramble! Get no, through it! Quick. Fuck you! This is quick. So I I blogged for several years, and I I held on to my blog for a long time because I I do love helping writers. I do love this part of what I do, but um, I didn't find that rewarding, and I find this really rewarding. And I love calls like that. I love emails. I love comments because it's it's validating. Like this this is this is a time spend for us, and I love it. I love doing this each week. And um and thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Buddy's in the chat too. That's what's kind of fun. Um yeah, that, it's it's great getting uh getting the feedback. You're, you're welcome, everybody. Okay, so here's the question with uh it's again Dave, step in. <laughs> hey Matt in Ohio. Um, this is for the self-publishing podcast. I guess better off than that as well. Uh, not really a question, but just a comment. I'll try to keep it brief. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Ed on a couple weeks ago who sells a lot of books and knows the algorithms and everything. And Johnny and Sean won't let him get a goddamn word in. <laughs> and then you have Lexi Maxwell on who, who you know, just going by her her rankings, doesn't move anything. Yeah, she, does. she won't shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> hey, dude, step in. They need to talk more. <laughs> one day actually says things other than I hate you all. You know, he's got a lot of good insights, and unfortunately, with the two yammering knuckleheads, he never seems to get a chance to talk. Believe it or not, I do like the shows. <laughs> but I, I guess the, the great thing about the last couple of weeks is we haven't heard about Garrett. Keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, is that the guy that commented on Better Off Undead? I don't know. I would love to know. No, that's a different guy. I don't oh, think okay. so. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. No, that, was, uh, that was. Garrett's that was getting some hate. Yeah, Garrett has his own little. Uh, tribal People people. hate Garrett. <laughs> Anytime you get a lot of exposure, you get hate. Everybody knows that. Um, All right. Yeah, Let's I think this is like you. End the show on a high note. You take or leave the self-publishing <laughs> podcast to some extent, folks. Like, there's going to be yammering knuckleheads and so on. All right, so there you go, Dave. Step in. So, well, let's. We do have two questions left, but we'll we'll save them. He'll probably yeah. want to check out my podcast where I actually let people talk. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that'll be awesome. <laughs> See, the thing is that Dave doesn't like to hear himself talk. Sean and I are in love with ourselves. Oh, we we love to talk. We're we're we're, we're, we're I hate myself. We're <laughs> chatty right. buggers. Right. So but no, no. In problem. all fairness, that the caller is right. We should talk less. Okay, so let's start now. Stop. Yeah, but what, what are the chances that's going to happen? Come oh, on. none. I'm saying we should, not that we will. Those are different oh. things. All right. All right, then uh, then we'll 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 draw to a close. We'll do the um the the voicemails uh, next time for the the remaining two, and I think there's some in the um in in my Dropbox too. So but we're catching up, and we'll maybe do the the keeping your confidence up. Yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do voicemails system. and confidence next week. We'll catch up. That'll be awesome. We'll do that. So uh, this time we just got to talk about ourselves even more, which is great. So it works out well. Dave, you should really step in on shit like that. Yeah, and pick up the beam. It's a bargain at nine ninety nine. It is. <laughs> it I'm is not a bargain buying. at nine. <laughs> is the print edition done? Then the print edition should be done soon. I would think if it's not already. Um, I. That's I, even I, more I expensive. So. We're real yeah. assholes. We're gonna we're gonna make the print edition ninety two dollars. Ninety seven dollars actually. Ninety seven. <laughs> No, we should price it 27. That's just hilarious. It's free if you subscribe to Frank Kern. (laughs) All right, everybody. So we'll see you in the next (laughs) one. Free print copies with Everyday Legendary subscription. (laughs)